You're not your friend anymore. So We back, you guys. We back in full effect. Um, first thing I want to do is I want to say shout out to everyone um, in the building. Shout out to everyone who's going to come past this video. And would you please hit the like button. Please subscribe if you're not subscribed either. Go check out my other content as well. Now, today, you guys, we have Mr. Boosie in the building. We have Mr. Boosie in the building. Now, Boosie is... um. He's talking about a situation with Vlad. Vlad asked him about, um, I think the, the, the Vlad asked him something. I'm not 100% sure, but we're going to look at the video. Vlad asked him something, but to make a long story short, um, Unfunk name came up in the snitching and that went on in Young Thug's case. So, and I can say that I was kind of, um, I was a little intrigued by Boosie's um, um, response to that question. But it's not about that. It's about what um, what I want to add to that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, we're gonna check this little video out, and then after that, we're gonna talk a little more about the video because there's a few things I want to say about that question that Vlad asked Boosie, and also about um, Boosie's answer to that question. You see, so I have a few things that I want to say to that too because it. Goes along with the things that I talk about and the things that I preach on social media. So with that being said, you guys, I'm going to stop talking so much, stop running off from my mouth, and let's get on into the video. Uh, Young Thug's brother, Unfook, he got his probation revoked. I guess he got caught with a gun, and now he got sentenced to nine years. Yeah. And remember, you called it. You said all these dudes are getting these 15-year plea deals, who are, and they're having to cooperate, because from what I understand... Uh, Unfu kind of did, you know, said something similar to what Gunna did. Yeah, he had to, he had to say the why sells the game on his brother, on his brother, brother, on his brother. See, I had to stop it right there. And Mr. Boosie, you're a hundred percent right about what you just said right there about brothers. But you got to look at the situation like this, too. This is how I look at it, though, from my uh, point of view, because people may say, well, why do they act like this? Or what would make a brother do these type of things? I'm going to tell you what it is. It's because at the end of the day, your brother really never had love for you. He really always envied you and wanted to be you, you see? So when he gets in, when he see you gets in a situation, like the situation that you got in, Boosie, and like the situation that other people get in, like with uh, with, with the authorities and things like that, you're probably you're fighting cases and stuff like that. And then now this is their way to kind of uh, um, strike back and try to get their self some, um, get noticed or whatever, or take your spot because he always wanted to be you and he envied you. You see what I'm saying? That's what it was because guess what? Um, if um, real, real brotherly love, you can, um, you, your brother's not going to tell on you like Unfunk did. Your brother ain't going to do the things that, um, that, 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 that your brother did to you and a lot of more people. You see what I'm saying? It's because that brother really envied you. He always wanted to be you. So whenever he see you go through any type of situation or things like that, that's when it's time for him to come into play and try to strike and do what he want to do. And then guess what? Now, anything that he want to do, he got to basically fall into the things that the new generation doing. Like it's only a few things he can do to you, tell on you, hate on you, steal from you and things like that. So he's going to do what they do, uh, what this new generation do. They're going to tell. You see what I'm saying? They're going to tell. Or either they're going to go kick it and um, entwine themselves with the people that you don't deal with or your enemies or your ops and things like that. And then, but you got to look at the situation like that. At the end of the day, you got to be real because I see a lot of people doing it. It ain't even got to just be your brother. It can be your buddy or whoever y'all get into it. And that next thing you know, he over there with the ops. You see what I'm saying? So, so all these, all these dudes, like, like Gunner is getting all the heat, but ultimately all these dudes who got out had to get out through similar situations. Right. So you called it. You said all these dudes, and you called it rap recycling goods. I'm not yes. calling you a rap. I'm just using your words. I said. You said. You know what I mean? And like all these dudes are getting these long ass plea deals, and then they get caught with a pistol, caught with some weed, dirty urine, whatever, whatever, and whatever. And not your friend anymore. Right back. 
They're not your friend anymore. So so they got what they wanted from you. They got what they wanted from you. And now they, they knew you would be looking over your shoulder, protecting yourself. They knew this. They knew what you would be labeled. See, for those that don't know, Boosie is dropping jewels. And I'm glad that you said that, Boosie, because this is why I kept telling y'all this on my video. See, when I tell y'all something, like, I don't just say nothing for clicks or views. And I'm, I never did that. You see what I'm saying? Never bought, never bought views, never bought subscribers, never did none of that. I'm all authentic. And this is why I kept telling y'all this here, y'all. Now I bet you believe me when I told y'all that um they put gunner in the paint see listen understand this here when gunner made that plea deal whenever gunner made it when he made the plea deal not the plea deal that we heard or whatever when they first came and talked to him about the situation and him getting out and stuff when gunner talked to those people those people told gunner right then and there what was gonna go down what everything he had to say to him what everything he had agreed to right and Gunner ran, ran over that paperwork and they told Gunner this personally. This stuff right here will be um will, will be closed. This stuff, this file will be closed. And they told Gunner, one thing they told Gunner for sure was well, this will not be televised. They told Gunner that. And this is how I know it's a um, 100% fact that they told Gunner that. And this is why Boosie just told y'all they knew what he would be labeled. And that's why they did this. Now, do everybody remember the first day when they announced Gunner's finna be released. He didn't get out the same day that they announced it on social media that he was finna get released. They said Gunner will be released. I, don't, I forgot if he got released later that day or the next day or something like that. But what I do remember is as soon as they made the announcement that Gunner was going to get out, they also read Gunner's post-release statement. And Gunner's post-release statement was... Um, I would never um, lie to my fans. I'm not a part of no case. I didn't snitch. I'm not going to be going to court on anybody or nothing like that. You know why? Because this is why the post release came out first, because they smoothed Gunner in. That Gunner cool, like, okay, well, they told Gunner, we're not going to televise it, but we want you to make this post release statement, right? Now, check this out. Now when it's time for Gunner to get out, that's why I was like, hey, go make the post-release statement first. You're supposed to make the post-release statement when you out already. But this is for everybody to say, because everybody going to say off top, Gunner finna get out, then Gunner snitch. And then they know what Gunner said or what Gunner pleaded to. Them people know what Gunner was going to be labeled, right? Okay. Now the next thing was this here. Now Gunner's being released. Now y'all got to remember this. The video of Gunner walking out, being released and all that stuff, that was first. It came out before the um before they released the video of Gunner in the courtroom making that statement. It came out the next day. First Gunner got out and that was trending all on YouTube that Gunner got out that day. Now I watched the video of Gunner getting out and everything, right? And you got that um, th that white news reporter from down there in Atlanta. He was talking on that. He was like, yeah, we got a call. He was like, yeah, I had to rush down here because we got a call that something big was going down in the YSL case. He said, I had to run down here. He said, I forgot my camera. He said, I even forgot my camera. But I rushed down here. I even He said, I rushed down here and I forgot my camera. He said something like, I got to I had to use my iPhone. But what threw me on there, and I kind of found that kind of odd because guess what, y'all? I'm looking like he forgot his camera, but he's on his camera. You know, they got his camera pointed in his face. Now check this out. And then they showed the video of Gunner in court. Now, they told Gunner that this won't be televised. This is why they made Gunner make a post-release statement before he got out, a written statement with Gunner on there. I haven't snitched. I haven't did this. I am no, and by no means cooperating with authority and everything. And guess what? Gunner looked up. Gunner seen him. It was the news dude, y'all. This is why he said iPhone. If y'all go look at the Gunner video where they saying that Gunner said, I mean, when Gunner was on there and she was asking Gunner the question, is it true that you're saying YSL the gang? And if y'all look at that, that video was took off a phone. It's nobody in the courtroom but that dude, y'all, the, 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 the cameraman. I mean, the news dude. He's in there. He took it off the iPhone. And this is how they snake Gunner out because when Gunner was sitting in there, Gunner kind of looked back and seen him like, 
hold on, this dude taking video off a phone. And that's why Gunna kind of paused on a couple of them questions. The old girl was like, did you say why I said it was gay? She said, did, she said, isn't this yours, what you said in the statement? Ooh. And Gunna took for a second and Gunna was like, yeah. This is why I kept telling y'all that they they got out because they told Gunna, if you take this plea agreement, it's not gonna, the plea agreement is not going to be televised. Guess what? They told Gunna that. They told Aunt Funk and them. They told all of them that. But then Walter Murphy won, right, first. But guess what? We didn't even hear Walter Murphy's plea agreement or nothing, right? This is how they trick Gunna. They didn't put Walter Murphy on there first. The, the other co-founder. They didn't even put his plea agreement statement up there. None. They just like he took um, he, he took a, a agreement or some of the plea agreement. He might be getting out, but they didn't put nothing up like they did a Gunner. So Gunner was the next one to get out. Right. And Gunner is the most noticeable one from YSL and all of them unfunk and all the rest of them. They had took the deal already. They told him the same thing. None of the public is going to notice this stuff is going to be sealed and all that. So guess what? When the Gunner, when they got the Gunner, then they do recorded it and then they threw it up on the Internet. This is how um, they already knew what they was going to be labeled. They already knew what everybody was saying. No, it was good gunning them a snitch and all that. They threw it on the internet. Now, the trickle effect was this here. Everybody know if Gunner got out like this and we hear what Gunner said, then that means Walter Murphy and the rest of the YSL and them who took the same plea agreement snitched as well. And that's how they snake YSL out. They, they trick Gunner. And then they, and then they need Gunna because Gunna is the one that can still make money. He's not signed to YSL no more, but Gunna is the one that can still make money. And then the same token, got all the thugs people out the way, got all the YSL members that can keep YSL going like Unfunk or anybody else, the co founder and all this. They got them out the way. You see what I'm saying? Because now everybody look at them like a snitch. See, but they know one thing for sure and two things for certain. Gunna is a Takashi type snitch. They can make money off him. And then they could promote Gunner. Um, they could promote Gunner, the snitch. You see what I'm saying? And it falls all into the the, 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 the whole systematic design that they got set up. And um, by having these boys telling and stuff like that, um, Gunner's welcome. He's basically welcome. He's going to make money for being a snitch. But guess what? None of the other YSL can't make no money. You see? And who's thug more mad at? Gunner, right? My point is that. Because check this out. Gunner is saying to 300 Entertainment. Gunner signed to Leo and Cordell. He signed to the same people that Thug was signed to. The same people that put Thug in the paint. Leo Corn and Kevin Lyles. This is what people don't know. Kevin Lyles, listen. Kevin Lyles is the guy that came and who, for people who don't know who Kevin Lyles is, that's the one Thug was signed to him and Leo Corn. Kevin Lyles is the one that came to Thug's court and was in there trying to get Thug to bond, crying in there thing, right? But here's the strange part. Kevin Lyles was also in the truck when they came and picked Gunner up, when Gunner got out. So listen, if Gunner's getting up here and going against the, if Gunner's getting up here taking this plea agreement, which shows that Thunder, Gunner is tricking on Thug, then why is Kevin Lyles picking them up? You see, because Kevin Lyles know what the agreement is if he up there picking them up. Kevin Lyles was there when Gunner got out. Even the news said, they said Kevin Lyles here too, but he never got out the truck or nothing. He never got, he was either in that Maybach truck or he was in another truck, but he never got out. Kevin Lyles was there. Then guess what? Then Kevin Lyles and Leo Corn them signed Gunner. He, he was in court for a thug and I told y'all it was um he was acting up there when he was up there. Tomorrow I put the house up, thug's a good man, and he's not a flight risk and all that. But you remember what the first prosecutor said, that the prosecutor that's not there no more, they got another prosecutor. You remember what the white boy said, right after Kevin Lyles got up there and did that phony crown that thing. The white boy said, Okay, now y'all done heard the song and dance. Now here's the real deal. And guess what? He the one that called, um, that brought in the court that the lawyer was a uh, was an informant. They got rid of that prosecutor. You see, that's the one that was not playing with him. And he got up there and said what Kevin Lyles was on stand saying. He basically said it was an act. He said, okay, now that y'all heard the song and dance, now let's get to the real deal. That's the same dude that when he said, um, he said, Thug and them got pulled over in the car, and the police asked Thug what his name, and he said Thug said he was a superstar, but the prosecutor was like, he said that he was a stupid star. Oh, I mean a superstar. Dude wasn't playing. They got rid of him because he wasn't going along with protocol. Either one came in the dough, 
and said that Thug's lawyer, Mr. Steele, was a, um, was an informant, did something on a murder case or something, told something, told he told all uh, dude came and told him about something or something. He got dude locked up for a murder. Just put it like that. And the prosecutor busted out, was like, this guy was a um he told him that Thug's lawyer was an informant on a on a murder case. Or something similar to them grounds right there, but he definitely called Thug's lawyer an informant. And Mr. Steele was mad because he got in court. <laughs> he was trying to slap in court, but dude definitely called him an informant. They knew that you were now. All we have to do is follow him. <laughs> we already have his phone yeah. number. Yeah. yeah. Now all we have to do is follow the GPS and we're going to get behind him and, and hit the lights on him. Two birds killed. Right. If Once you're on probation, you, you can't have it. You, you, you can't stop the search. You can't stop the search. Right. There, there, you know, you can't say no probable cause. You can't say no, it's in my locked glove box. No, you are still in jail because you're on probation. And you're a convicted felon. And you're a convicted felon. So we're going to search your car because we feel like it. And oh, I, look, we found a gun. Right. Nine years. Thank you. It's the recycling pen, bro. They keep, yeah. they keep recycling you, bro. And now we have um, Thugs. You know, Thug brother on Funk got um, allegedly caught with a gun, too. Yeah, but you probably heard about it. And they gave him nine years. And he had took the plea agreement, too, you see. Because they're like Boosie say, y'all took the 15 years. All, everybody took that plea agreement to tell on um, to tell on Thug. They're going to be watching y'all the whole time. The first time you slip, one time on that bitch, you gone. Just like Unfunk. And this is why I say Unfunk was, um, he, was he, he, he was really disloyal. You know why? Because Thug brother Unfunk. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he was doing a life sentence. He was doing a life sentence or a lot, a lot of time. But I think it was a life sentence. Don't quote me on it. But Thug had that lawyer, Mr. Steele, get this man back in court. Thug spent all his money to get this man back in court and out on the streets again. Now Thug get caught up and then you goes in there and take this plea agreement and say that the same record label that he used to gather up the money to get you out and pay your lawyers and all this stuff, you goes in there and tell the prosecutors that this is a gang. Strange, isn't it? I will be back, you guys. Hope you enjoyed the show. And I'm out.